Good morning. What you making? Eggs. 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 Oh, it's starting to thicken. Just oh boy. A little bit. These are actually the best eggs though. Best camping eggs. I uh, I bought another six bags. I believe they're from Iowa. only buy them in the U.S. You can order off their website, but it, it takes a little while to ship to Canada, but it's totally worth it. They're the best. They taste, I mean, I think if you were to put these, you know, side by side with real scrambled eggs, it would be really hard to tell the difference. What do you think of those eggs? Huh? Do you want some eggs? Do you want some eggs? So we're making this into scrambled eggs right now, but you can definitely make it in different ways. Like if you wanted to do like a flat egg, like kind of like a fried egg, you could do that as well, which is probably better for sandwiches. Yeah, that makes more sense for us. But... Yeah, I think it's too late now. They look really scrambled. <laughs> it's too late. We'll work with it. I think we're, we're not using bagels this time, so it shouldn't be too bad. Yeah. Flatbreads. When you're using bagels, they all just kind of fall through the middle, which sucks. Most important part. Here's a tip stop for McDonald's on the way up here and ask for extra mayo packets. They're the best for camping. Uh, it's very linear. Your mayo application method. It's, it's, it's kind artistic. of artistic though because that's like ripply ribbon like. You didn't go with the, the circle method, instead you went with the straight line. Yeah, I like things to be pretty linear. <laughs> What's going on over there? I think they use this bay here to kind of project their call. Because it's like cliffs on either side, so it must act like a megaphone for them to the rest of the lake. Emma's already had her kibble breakfast, but this is her, wait, Emma, wait, this is her eggs and bacon camp breakfast. Okay. One for the bacon first. All right.
second coffee and breakfast dessert is maybe my favorite part of rest days. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty good. So instead of using our rain fly this trip, we're putting a tarp over top of our tent. And the reason for that is to allow a bit more airflow in the tent because it's been so hot. Um, it's been, you know, daytime highs of 30, reaching 35, 36 with the humidex. You know, a few times where we've left the rain fly off because it was hot, it ended up raining and then we scrambled in the middle of the night to get the rain fly on. So this at least gives us a bit of time to get the rain fly on if it's a if it's a big storm and if it's just a light rain it should be more than enough to keep us protected so yeah we're really liking it so there's many different ways to tie up a tarp and i'm going to just show you how i tied mine up this time it varies depending on how i'm using it but this one here i wanted to make sure that we get like i can control the water runoff a little bit because we're on a bit of a slope and i don't want the water dripping off behind the tent and then kind of having to run through the tent or you know potentially splashing up on us so so what I do in this situation is I first tie up a ridge line so this line runs across the entire tarp from tree to tree maybe I can get a better angle over here so you can see that this line is tied off here and it runs through the top of the tarp there's but there's three eyelets and then runs over to that other tree and I tried to find two trees that were perfectly aligned with the direction of our tent we obviously want to put the tent down first to make sure it's a flat even spot that's most important and I use a, a trucker's hitch here to um, make sure I'm getting it nice and taut um, so then the four corners of the tarp I just tied off to various trees Again, trying to find trees that kept it as square as possible. And then the back two, I tied up a little higher than the front two. So you can see that it creates a bit of a downward slope towards the front two corners. So that's gonna allow the water to, you know, kind of come off here, run down the tarp, run down to this corner, and then it'll drip off here. And so then when it drips here, it'll run down this hill away from the tent instead of behind the tent and then under the tent and potentially creating some pooling. Yeah, so that's how I hang my tarp. So another thing to note is how I keep the tarp taut on the ridge line. So you definitely, you don't, you don't want any sag or anything like that because then what's gonna happen is the water is gonna pool here and never escape the tarp. So to keep it taut, what you do, or what I do, I use a prusik. It's kind of like a loop wrapped around the ridge line uh, two or three times and it's a locking knot so it's actually used in climbing a lot and what it does is when it's when it's not taut it just slides really easily on the on the rope so I can actually pull it to whichever position I want it to be in so I can pull it taut and then as soon as you pull it hard it'll lock so you can see now when I try and pull this, it's locked there. So that's a really easy way to be able to pull pull your ridge line or pull your tarp tight on the ridge line without needing to deal with like extra loops or knots or toggles or anything like that. So yeah, look it up, Prusik knot. So you may have noticed that all of the ropes that I use on my tarp setup are orange. And it's not just it's not because I, I like the color orange, it's because you want to keep them as visible as possible. The key thing here is to make sure like, you know, someone doesn't walk into your, your tarp lines and get clotheslined or damage your equipment. So 
I use orange rope for that. And it's also reflective. It has, I don't know if you can see, but it has like little uh, reflective um, threading in there. So that um, makes it very visible at night as well, which is also important. So that's why I use orange rope in my tarp. Pour. It aerates it. It's perfect. So we're here on Hogan's right now, somewhere around here, and we need to go into Burnt Root tomorrow morning. So we're going to cross this pretty big section of Hogan's, so hopefully there's no wind. What site are we on right now? Somewhere around here. Yeah. And then we'll have to wind through here, it's like there's maybe like a creek or a marsh kind of area at the end of Hogan's here that we have to navigate. Then we go through a 685 portage into Lake Lemire and we travel through Lake Lemire for quite a bit and then we hang a right up here a quick 735 meter portage into Red Pine Bay up Red Pine Bay which turns into Burnt Root and again this is another one of those situations where there's two lakes that are joined without a portage that have separate names. I think that means that there's probably like a big marsh here or something that we'll have to go through. Mm -hmm. That's like, that's what it was like here between sunfish and catfish. Yeah. It was like a big marsh in this section. So it's probably the same thing in here. And so it's only two portages, but it's a lot of lake time. A lot of time on the lake, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'll probably have to like, I think maybe take a quick break on Lake Lumiere here at one of these sites if they're available. Yeah. Just to kind of have lunch and let Emma get in the water a bit and chill because I think this is going to be a long stretch for her to be in a canoe yeah so or maybe even the site here would be a good spot mm. yeah we're heading into burnt root um these sites here look pretty good if they're not available we could look at some island sites I don't particularly like staying on islands because there's no firewood but they're an option also islands are are really exposed to wind and we're supposed to get some wind tomorrow night so maybe maybe one of these ones is yeah. good doing some reading having a little more wine while Emma takes a nap and Jamie's fishing and when he gets back we'll get to making our dinner says. We're really loving the uh, tent and tarp setup for this hot weather. It's really helped to let the breeze in and, and make it less stiflingly hot in the tent, um, but also give us protection for when it's calling for rain. Um, definitely a keeper that we'll do again, I'm sure. Sunset. 
yeah, we just walked through the back of our campsite a little ways and through a bunch of bushes. But we found this awesome beach. <laughs> Could have hung out here all day. I mean, we were great where we were hanging out, but this is beautiful. You can watch the sunset here. How's the pizza? Good. It would have been better on non bread. On non bread? Yeah. Yeah, that's how we make it at home. This is like whole wheat. I'm trying to be healthier. Well, we brought this for the breakfast mm. sandwiches. So. Careful, it's pretty hot. astronaut ice cream to eat for dessert that we've never tried before. Yeah, yeah. It looks like kind of like an Oreo or something. Almost like ice cream, except it's not cold, but it's good. Really? Oh. So thumbs up for the astronaut ice cream. Look at it. It looks just like an eat like if wow. like I bet no one can tell the difference between that and an actual ice cream sandwich. Except it's really crunchy. Does it make a big mess? A bump. A little bit.
morning. Good morning. Just some quick oatmeal and coffee this morning so we can head out. It's gonna get pretty windy uh, and windier as the day goes. Okay. So we ended up prepping way more wood than we actually needed but it's always a good idea to leave a little bit behind. Maybe not this much, but leave a little bit behind for the next group, just in case it's raining or they're cold or they have trouble finding wood because it could save someone's life. Maybe not this time of year, but definitely in the fall and spring. So try to always leave a little bit of wood after you go. And tuck it under somewhere like the bench so it's not soaked. Bye. Jamie's favorite campsite. It was a good one. Yeah, it was one of my favorites too. See the waterfall? Sure. Going so, we're going backwards to get to the portage because we just wanted to see the waterfall but Emma <laughs> immediately needs to switch positions so that she's in the front yeah, there now she's in the front <laughs> what happens when we start going forward so... she's going to be pretty upset oh, we're going forward yeah. Now you gotta go the other way.
I forgot to look at the sign, but I think it's a 650 into Lake Lanier. This is fancy. Fancy. <laughs> Ooh, look at all that. Log jam. Log jam. It's pretty cool. This dock is a reminder that we're in a well traveled area of the park. Yep. How are you gonna get up now? Uh oh. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that must be bad. We had a quick little snack, and Emma went for a swim in this bog. And we discovered our pepperonis are gone moldy. And I discovered that while eating one. And I ate it anyway. I ate one too, so. <laughs> Let's see if they start tripping out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was already in my mouth and all chewed up, so it was like, whatever. Gotta swallow it, so. <laughs> we'll see how we're feeling. And Emma shook her mud in our day pack food bag, so. Got all kinds of things against us right yeah, now. Yeah, we won't even know what made us sick. <laughs> all right, Lake Lemire. Passing by this pretty site, we're gonna stop, dunk Emma to clean her off, and get back going. Good girl. Nice to cool down. Pretty like it's really nice around this corner too. This campsite has like a little um, sunset perch. So if you want to watch the sunset on the other side of the site, they have like a little clearing where you can set up a couple chairs. It's nice. You feel better? You're not all muddy? tired.
Jamie says that that looks like a cane delta. And that looks like a cane moraine from the glacial melt. Mounds of sediment. And how they differ, I cannot remember. Even though he just told me. Deltas are formed from the delta off the, like off of the glacier, meaning like a river running off the glacier. And that river leads to a point of termination where the water falls, typically down a hole or off the edge of it. And it takes all the sediment with it. As glaciers move, they scrape the rock and the, and the earth, pick up a lot of debris. So as they melt, all that sediment piles up where the water's running off. So that there is such a neat little pile on the right there. It looks, looks like it could be a cave melt from the glacier. It's just kind of this pile out of nowhere. Whereas this one here looks more round. And there's kind of a shallow dip in the middle. And that's usually... Cool. Okay. A cane moraine and a cane delta. Neat little pile over there. It's actually a couple little piles. A couple little neat piles. Yeah, I think it probably Bow. is. It's where? That way. Sorry. Okay. We thought it was over here, but it's not. It's that way. We overshot it a bit. There it is, just around the corner, hiding. This is a climb. Yep. Ooh, there's more. Oh, wow. Kind of beautiful. It's like a little staircase. Looks like they built stairs in to the landscape. It's really pretty. Oh, oh, roadblock. You wanna hop up? Good girl. See water. Oh, okay. And that's how you trip. <laughs> Distracted. Okay, there's water ahead. We're here. We're on our lake. Before 11:30. Still have to find a campsite though. It's a big lake. It's 11.30 and we're on Red Pine Bay. So we're not on our lake. We are on an adjoining lake, but we won't have to portage in between. So we'll just be in the boat until we get to Burnt Root. I thought we were gonna be on Burnt Root. We're almost on Burnt Root. It's a cooling hat. It cools you and it shades you. It's really nice. 
another device that we <laughs> that I <laughs> decided to bring to try and help keep Emma cool on this trip testing it out um, in the water for the first time got our umbrella up and Emma's lower half is in the shade now which is great took her hat off for a bit I might put it back on. And it's working. It's not very windy, which is why it's working. We're officially in burnt root now. I can't see Jamie. clouded over a bit and also Jamie couldn't see with the umbrella up so we've gotten rid of it for now looking for a site it's a little bit windy a little bit wavy Emma's got her hat on there's two campsites on this island one on that side and one on this side we're gonna check them out that one gets a sunset but it's gonna be really windy tonight uh, supposed to be anyway and it looks very windswept as it is um, so we're just gonna go have a look but we're thinking maybe a site with a bit more shelter for tonight because of the wind way too windy here we're not gonna stay on that site there's another point sticking out just ahead of it Yeah, let's check out the other side of the island. Okay. Don't like it? Okay. going past the island and see what's here. If we don't like that, we'll go to the other side. Well, let's go. You don't want any water? Had enough water, she says. This is another one that's not great. We abandoned the second island back there because it didn't look great. And then we went sideways to the waves, which is not fun, across to this one, and it doesn't look amazing. We can be picky sometimes, but also because we have a rest day tomorrow, um, it'd be nice to have a really great site. And uh, I mean, we can move too. We could also move and spend two nights on the lake, but different sites. Break time? Yeah. Interesting. I mean, it's nice and sheltered. Yeah. Good fireplace. 
Wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and you don't feel the wind, which is what I wanted. Wow, you don't even feel a breeze though. And this is a little jagged to get in, but yeah. not ideal for Emma swimming. Well, let's have a, let's have a snack. We looked at the map, and now we're gonna go into the wind, either to one of the first sites we saw, back closer to Red Pine Bay, or around the other side of the lake that we haven't really been to yet. Yeah. And hopefully they're not all taken by now. Yeah, I mean, it's only one. I've been paddling around for about an hour. All right, it's gonna be all hands on deck here. All hands on deck. Check out the site on this island. There's only one site on it. Now we're thinking if it's really one. Where? There's two on this island. One on that tip and one on that side. Yeah, sure. We may as well check all the sites on this whole lake. <laughs> we're almost we're almost there anyway. This is another site on the lake. I'm going to show you every single site in this video. You might not know which one it is on the map though. I'm just filming so that I don't have to paddle at this point. <laughs> <What's that? laughs> <I'm> just, nothing. <laughs> okay, we're back at one of the first sites we saw going by from Red Pine Bay. And it's free and we're taking it. <laughs> We've seen them all. So we gotta channel our way through this little rock pile area. What is it? It's from a train. It's from a train? I think, or a pulley. We have no idea what it is. It's from the logging. But it's a wheel. It's from the logging. <laughs> it's, from, it's probably from like some type of rail cart. A rail cart, okay. We spent like two and a half hours on burnt route here. <laughs> Just paddling around in the wind, looking at every site on the lake. Well, for good reason. None of them were good. Yeah, they were all awful. They're pretty bad. Oh, there's a third path. And you think it goes to a beach? I think there's a beach. Oh my gosh. little path. Oh right my here. gosh. Hey. Look at that. Wow. Not really. Fire still on? Fire still on. Oh no. People. How, how many sites? I can't even count how many sites we've been to where people don't pour water. Here. Well now it's really home. What's that? I don't know. It's old. Niner. Nine IR eight oh one. We're having some snacks. We're getting a little tired of our snacks. 
We have the same snacks every day. It's okay. Mm -hmm. I was saying normally we eat these on the go. So we're not really paying too much attention to what we're eating. We're just getting some calories in us. Now we're sitting at Camp ER on the go snacks and they're not that great. Yeah, I had mentioned that I was thinking it wasn't great that we had just our on the go snacks for our rest days, but also like getting to camp. Today was a short day. So. It was? Today was really short. <laughs> well, we left at 8 10 and it's 3 o'clock. We got her at 2. 2 10. Yeah. We got to the lake at 12. It wasn't it wasn't long, yeah. but we just we were we've been on this lake looking at campsites for two and a half hours. So we're hungry. Anyway. It was two and a half hours. Yep. And flies are out. to camp just in time but we haven't said anything up yet we just got here So the, so the creamy beef that we like, what brand is that? Alpine Air. Alpine Air is our favorite dehydrated Al Alpine Air? Alpine Air is our Alpine. favorite dehydrated meal. Oh my God, we're getting some hurricane winds here. I heard this one's good online. You heard this one was good online and it's one of the best dehydrated meals out there. Thoughts? Better than creamy beef by Alpine Air? You know what? No, I don't. No. It's, I think flavor-wise, yeah, it's like probably better. But the beef, it's like ground beef chunks instead of like oh, actual yeah, pieces of steak. Oh yeah, I don't like that. I think in the Alpanero one, it's like, what we're eating. it's like chunks of steak or something. This is more like little hamburger balls, like meatballs. Yeah. Like. Okay, it's probably too windy to be filming this. We're gonna eat. That's what it looks like. Very hungry. This is actually the one backpacking meal that I would eat at home as a snack. It's that good. Me too. I love it. Now you're eating M&M's? What? Now you're eating M&M's? Okay. Okay, I have a nice sunset on this. Well, what's it take to get a nice sunset shot without someone panting and chewing? This is on this trip. What was your favorite part of the day? Mm. Um, 
arriving at the site. Like the marsh that we went through. Mm. That's so funny, I was going to say arriving at this site. <laughs> I think we really exhausted all of our options looking around today. You may just appreciate this site a lot more. It's a really good site. It didn't look that good. Yeah, when we first passed it, we were like, huh? Alright, keep going. I think, yeah. Can't judge a book by its cover all the time. But we did get it, like, we got nice and close to a lot of sites and even checked some out on foot. Not very good. No, there's nothing very good. That was your least favorite part of the day. When Emma was swimming in that thing. <laughs> in the bog? Mm hmm. In the log jam, and then we came out and shook bog water all over our food bag that was open. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we'd get in the canoe, and then some.